Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. Today we are back with another Dragon Ball figure news video and ladies and gentlemen, oh we got a big one for you today. I'm sure you can see the top of the screen there. Look at all those tabs just waiting to be clicked on. We have all of our regular news from the past two weeks as well. We just had SDCC happen over this past week and weekend so we have all of the news from that to cover i'm not going to linger on the intro for too long today however if you do enjoy this video don't forget to like and subscribe and if you would like to support the figure unboxing channel here and all the work that i do on this channel you can definitely hit up the patreon if you would like to support that way but we have a ton of news to hop into today let's get into it our first piece of news is a small update on the SDCC 2022 figures. Obviously, we talked about these guys last time, but unfortunately, it does seem that after gathering all of the information that we currently know about these guys from SDCC, there is no premium Bandai. I don't know why I started to turn into a Texan there. <laughs> no premium Bandai release of these figures, unfortunately, which means that you're going to have to get these guys second hand. Attendees were able to get two per person per day, so hopefully there are quite a few out there. But unfortunately, they're probably going to be a little overpriced, which is ironic because, as you can see, our next tab here, um, at least July 15th, which was literally like the very beginning of SDCC, I think maybe even a day before um, it actually happened, or at least, yeah, it was definitely around the start, right? Um, they're already popping up on eBay, which is crazy. I don't know if that was just like pre-listings and people were just like, yeah, I'm going to get it. So I'm going to list it early, um, or what how, but as you can see here, um, they had Goku for 150 to 190, Shinron for 190, 16 to 130, Boo for 160 and all four for around 600, which is crazy. If we click on eBay here, um, you can see that, yeah, those prices are still about accurate. Um, for all of these figures here. It's kind of crazy that they are this expensive, but I suppose that makes sense all things considered because obviously, you know, you're paying for something that was only available at a convention. Moving on. This is the page that I forgot to close. I apologize. By the way, this is a good thing to note though real quick before we hop into this. With all of these tabs, it is so hard to organize all of these things into the sections that they're on. I try to do my best in the beginning, but once we get to later on, there's going to be different things talking about the same figure in different tweets. So I apologize about that. But with this much news to cover, it's a little bit hard to uh, organize it all. Okay, so we talked about basically the major updates for Parunga last time, but we did have a small update for the boy, apparently this isn't a premium Bandai release, but a regular Bandai release, uh, which is interesting. So basically that means that this guy will be a over-the-counter figure. Ironic that it's going to cost so much, um, but yeah, this is not any kind of exclusive figure or anything like that. Um, it is quite literally just uh, a regular release for figures, which is very interesting. As you can see here, um, we also have the height, including the head and the pedestal included. We took a look at this guy last time with most of the pictures, so we're not going to linger on it, but I figured that that was important information to give you because I thought that this guy was certainly a premium band I released myself, but no, apparently he's just a regular one, which is pretty interesting. So these are actually something cool that released recently, and funny enough, I had a personal experience with these. The Dragon Ball Super Battle Minifigure Series box of 24 minifigures um, was just released over here in the States. Big Bad Toy Store has um, a whole box that you can buy, and it looks like it's about 150 um, Again, keep in mind, that's for all of them. You're not just getting like five. There's going to be repeats because the whole purpose of these right is that they put this on a store shelf and then you buy one pack of it right and then you leave the store with your one pack of it i actually did see these at my local target this exact box in fact funny enough i saw this before i read this article when i was doing the research for this video so that was pretty funny um that i actually saw that beforehand but yeah basically 
Um, this is basically just some random minifigures that you can get. Um, they are all kind of in the same scale, which is pretty cool. Um, you don't know which one you're going to get because the little plastic bag that they're in, you can't really see through it. I'm sure if you felt it, you could probably tell, right? Especially considering you can see on the box, right? It's Gogeta, Gogeta, Broly, and then Goku and Frieza from the Universe Survival arc. You could definitely feel that because they all have pretty distinct shapes as to who you were going to get from these. So if you are out and about and you see these in your local store, definitely uh, if you want one pick them up and send me a picture on twitter for sure so this was actually super exciting i'm not gonna lie and something that i actually might pick up myself so i don't know how familiar um a lot of you are with the dragon ball adverge figures especially these sets basically dragon ball adverge is just a bunch of mini figures um that dragon ball does every once in a while sort of like a chibi type of thing um they're pretty cool i have a couple of them myself they're definitely not insane in terms of figures but some of them are basically just the mom it's my turn on the xbox pose which is basically what the ones that have been released are but then they also have dragon ball adverge motion which is interesting that they're not calling it that despite these figures not being in the standard dragon ball adverge uh pose right Funny enough, I have that Super Saiyan 3 Goku literally right there on my desk. I'm looking at it right now. But what's cool about this um, is that the Big Bad Toy Store announced that these figures um, are going to be getting a little bit of an update in the way of sets 1 through 4 um, are going to be releasing. Now, these two have already been out for a while. I've seen these on Target store shelves. So it seems like that they're just being, going to be like re-released with this new set. But what is pretty cool about this um, is that as you can see, right, we have two new sets and set three is going to have Goku, Vegeta, Super Saiyan, Broly, and Piccolo. Um, obviously, this is the Broly movie sort of set here, right? We have the um, final Kamehameha and of course Broly just doing his funny pose and Piccolo's there, I guess, because, you know, he helps them fuse. And then for set four, we have Vegito Blue Merge Zamasu, not corrupted, regular, which is interesting because the Vegito Blue uh, pose is literally when he's putting his fist against corrupted Merge Zamasu, right? When they're having that like struggle. So it's interesting that they chose regular Fuse Zamasu. Not that I'm opposed because I'm definitely more of a fan of that. But we also have a Super Saiyan 3 Goku doing the Dragon Fist and it looks to be a Kamehameha MUI Goku, which is really cool. Of each of these figures are about two inches tall, as you can see, 1.79 inches. Um, makes sense because obviously these are supposed to be minifigures. It seems like Big Bad Toy Store um, is going to have these, and it seems like for a set, it's going to be around $30. You might be able to find these a little bit cheaper in stores because if I remember correctly, these are only 20 bucks. Um, but I mean, that is a pretty decent deal, even if you are paying 30 because these figures can go anywhere from 8 to $10. They're pretty expensive for little minifigures, if I'm being honest with you. Um, but they are cool, so I might actually pick up set 4 myself, because that is a lot of characters that I really like um, in that set. So definitely keep an eye out for those on store shelves uh, when those eventually release for sure. So this was a very big piece of news, even before SDCC happened. Um, we have a SH Figuarts Turles that has been announced, or Tullis, because they like to use the very weird translations for these names. Um... This was just announced on Tomashi Nations USA and a link on the Premium Bandai website is already up, but pre-orders have not begun. Um, it is very interesting to see that um, we have gotten a ton of Turles figures recently, including this guy, and we'll actually take a look at a tweet of that later. Um, but yeah, so with this guy, um, it's kind of interesting because there's a little bit of price discrepancy for where you're buying this guy. So first of all, um, on Big Bad Toy Store, he's uh, 114 bucks. And he's going to come out in February. I'm assuming that's because their first pre-order is already sold out. And now they have to do a little bit more expensive ones. Or maybe it's just because the figure is already so expensive. That's right. On normal premium Bandai USA, um, the figure is going to be 70 bucks Now, typically with these premium Bandai figures, 
they get to price them a little bit higher because they come with these various different accessories, as you can see here. Turles comes with this funny onion ring attack, uh, which actually looks really cool. Obviously, he comes with the Fruit of the Tree of Might as well. He also has the Scouter, and he has a Cloak, which is really cool. I don't think the Scouter is actually removable. Um, I mean, he doesn't take it off in the movie, so I guess it wouldn't really make sense for it to be removable. But yeah, the Cloak looks sick. I really, really like the design of this, um, but this guy is going to be 70 bucks. Keep in mind, that's still 10 bucks with the... Um, more with the shipping excuse me so it's more going to be like 80 dollars. that's why this guy is so expensive um all things considered we'll see a little bit more hd quality of these pictures in a second and we also just took a look at them on the website anyway um yeah so in yen um he's going to be seven thousand yen which makes sense because that's about 70 bucks there um the interesting thing yeah baggy kind of notes and this is sort of the feeling that i get with this figure um it is kind of a weird thing, right? Because it's cool that Turles comes with all these accessories. Like, it's cool that Kefla for the SH Figure Arts came with the candy cane beams. And Vegito came with the big keyblade and all that stuff. But what it kind of feels like is that they are charging you double, triple the price in some cases with these figures. Just so that they can throw in some cheap accessories and then bloat the price when this could easily be a standard release for like 35 bucks. Like if it didn't come with all this extra stuff, I probably would have caught this turtle. And I think I'm going to get this guy anyway because I am a sucker for whenever a character wears a cloak. <laughs> so I definitely want it. But um it definitely does kind of feel like that and especially again with just premium bandai releases in general like the only one that i kind of understood being a little bit more expensive was cooler because he was so much bigger and he was a premium bandai release right um but that is your boy turtleist there um yeah so he's 70 bucks um us i believe um i was seeing something that he was a little bit cheaper on the japanese um, version of the website, but I don't think that's actually true um, because if he's 70 yen um, Then I mean, you know, that's literally the same price as USD, which is 70 bucks So it makes sense that um, both audiences are basically paying the same price again I don't know why they call him Tellus. seems like such a weird thing. Do they have this actual? Yeah, okay I was gonna say um, these are like the better quality versions of these images they have it on the um, actual premium bandai website here fruit of the tree of might and cape included yeah i sure hope so display him in dynamic poses this is such a goofy one like they pick pretty decent poses for the box art and the promotional material but this is <laughs> what is he doing i guess this is supposed to be when he knees goku in the stomach right like when he's flying in the air but it kind of just looks like um <laughs> when johnny comes marching home hurrah <laughs> i don't know just a very goofy pose right uh, again, here is the onion ring beam. It kind of looks like that there's going to be some extra pegs to stick that to his hands. It's going to be interesting to see how that connects on the final figure. Um, three face parts for this set. Very interesting. Oh, it's several. I literally can't read. Sorry, Dragon Ball fan moment. So he has a smirking face, a open mouth face that's sort of angry, a gritting teeth face, and a eating the fruit of the tree of my face, which is pretty cool. So yeah, um, let me know what you think about this guy in the comment section below for sure. I am going to be curious what ends up happening with this guy, if a lot of people purchase him or not. I know that the movie characters have been getting quite a bit of love recently, so it kind of doesn't surprise me. Um, I will say the one thing that I don't like about the sculpt, and usually SH Figure Arts is fine with their sculpt, is the hair looks a little bit weird. Like, I know he's just basically Goku's haircut, but his hair definitely looks a little bit weird in this area. I don't know, maybe it's just the angle... Um, maybe it's just like the specific cut, but this like one extra spike just feels a little bit out of place to me. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm so used to looking at Goku's hair. So, um, here are the highest quality production images real quick, um, before we actually get into the next week. Actually, yeah, there we go. I was going to say while those are loading, um, we can talk about the fact that it is kind of a strange thing. The Turles has just exploded in popularity recently. I, I don't know why, right? Um, so obviously we've talked about these figures a couple of times in the past, um, in the, I think maybe the last figure news video and maybe the one before with the gigantic series Turles. Um, but of course right now we have all these different Turles figures coming out with the SHF one, um, being around 70 bucks, right? The gigantic series one is just basically like 200. It's a pretty ridiculous price point. And then of course the Kuji one, um, you know, we have no idea 
because at the moment it doesn't seem like it's listed for overseas and so we'll have to wait and see what the second hand market is um but it is interesting why all of this turless love i i really don't know um i mean i'm all right with it i like turless i mean he's not like my favorite dragon ball character i guess but i think he's pretty cool and i definitely wanted like a figure of him for the collection so i don't know it's very interesting to me that they're pushing him um, right now but yeah it is a little bit unfortunate that all these figures are so expensive because what this kind of does feel like from bandai's side right is that they know that this is a little bit more of like a unique or a unique i was going to say unique and niche and it combined into one word um unique and definitely like a fan favorite character but i think a little bit more of a niche fan favorite like the people who really like him like him and then there's also people who are just kind of like yeah Exorless is cool right but I think what they know is that the people who really want Turles merch are going to shell out these big bucks when they don't necessarily have to be this expensive in terms of the prices of the figures, right? So kind of unfortunate to see, but it is what it is. Okay, so speaking of overpriced figures, I don't even really like regard the price on these figures as anything like too crazy, even though they're all super expensive. Because this company Plex that designs this line, the Dragon Ball Allies line, their figures are always really overpriced. Um, they're just always like 200 plus. Why? I don't know. But that's the way that they decide to do it. Um, so they are going to be done with Team Piccolo, as we saw. All of Piccolo's minions and himself just came out from Dragon Ball. And then moving on to Master Shen and Tien Shinhan. Um, now, ch no Chaozu in the set. Sorry, that tripped me up with the way that it was spelled. Um, maybe he'll be coming in a future release. These are PVC figures in a regular and special color edition. Um, the cost will be... Whew! 27,500 yen with a ship date of 2022 in Japan, probably next year in the US. Yeah, so that's going to be around the $300 mark, uh, close to there. Maybe more like 275 something like that. Why these figures are always so expensive, I have no idea, um, but they are always super expensive. Um, uh, they don't even look like that crazy different from regular Ichiban Kuji figures. I don't know, maybe it's because Plex is sort of like a hype beast company from what I understand. Um, but interesting nonetheless. Um, this is also pretty cool. So I don't know if you guys remember from a couple of figure news videos a long while ago, um, when I was still doing them on the Dokkan Assets channel, I talked about how they were releasing these Dragon Ball logos in a clear form. Um, and they're doing with the Capsule Corp logo, which is pretty neat. Again, it's nothing too crazy, but it's nice if you want some kind of little Capsule Corp display, um, on, you know, your shelf. It's pretty neat. Moving on, oh yeah, let's talk about this bad boy, and we're actually going to get to see some uh, figures from the upcoming movie Kuji as well. So, confirmed, uh, the gold Shinron will only be available to win in Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, and Malaysia. This is for their regular Ichiban Kujis, by the way, um, because obviously, you know, in the States, we're not getting this figure overseas. You can't buy him normally, and obviously when Baggy says, you know, win, that means in the lottery. Speaking of which, we'll actually talk about Gold Shenron in another minute here. Um, yeah, this is pretty cool. So we basically have a bunch of final images of this guy that we're going to see throughout this video. Um, and even though he is at an angle, obviously, I kind of like how the hair turned out as well. Um, of course, it looks a little bit weird looking at him like this. And his teeth definitely look a little bit big, right? But I think if you display him at the right angle, it'll look good. That is my problem with some figures is that it's a 3D object. It should look good from all angles. And there are certainly figures that do that. But this guy definitely is one that's going to be like a, a one angle and you're done. But I definitely don't think it's the worst Gohan figure I've ever seen for sure. Um, we will take a look at him a little bit more too in the rest of this video. So this was pretty interesting as well. Um, we had the upcoming movie Kuji figures on a white background. Um, up until this point, we have not seen them on the stereotypical white backgrounds. Um, very interesting. Goten actually does look pretty good here in this super high quality image of this. Um, I do quite like the way that he actually ended up turning out. Um, he looks better than I feel like I initially had the impression of, so that's pretty cool as well. We also have Gohan. I feel like, again, this is another thing where like his teeth is a little bit too big and he would look a little bit better if it wasn't. But this is definitely a good-looking Gohan figure, for sure. I, I definitely like the way that this looks, and I might actually pick up these two. I was originally only going to cop the villains, but I quite like these two, actually, after seeing these more high-quality images. Um, obviously, we have Turles here. I will say... Sorry, gotta hydrate, hydrate or dehydrate. Don't forget to drink water if you're watching this video. 
with this guy, right, he definitely does look a little bit goofy. I agree with Baggy. Like, maybe it's his eyebrows are a little bit too high up or something like that. Um, his hair also feels a little bit like it's almost like he is about to zoom forward. Like, you know how in anime when they have the hair kind of spring up a little bit and then the character dashes forward? That's kind of what I feel like Turles' hair is stuck in here. He almost has two little uh, devil horns there as well, which is kind of interesting. He also feels like very soft in terms of his sculpt, which is interesting. Very rounded, lots of rounded edges. Very interesting to see when that figure eventually comes out. We have the boy Janemba. Um, I do kind of agree with Baggy here. It is a little bit weird that Turles gets the fruit uh, and then Janemba gets no sword. I mean, with this pose, it wouldn't really make sense to give him the sword, I suppose, because it would just kind of be a little bit awkward just holding it in his hand. Um, I mean, this figure looks really good. And again, this is the first, like, actual Janemba figure that we've literally gotten ever. If the figure art 01 would have released that we saw that prototype um, a couple years back, I think, now, which is crazy. Um, we would have had one, but yeah, he seems to be the first. So he looks good. Um, I'm definitely happy. He's probably the one that I'm the most excited for, honestly, since, again, he's like with the one with the least amount of figures. Uh, we have Cooler and Cooler here. These two also look really good. Um, the sculpt style of the first horn Cooler, I will say, um, even though it's very basic, it is very in line with the final form Ichiban Kuji Cooler um, that we got with the other highly detailed Broly um, a little while back. And I love that figure. It's actually on my shelf right now. I look at it literally every day and its sculpt is so nice. So this guy will look super nice next to that. And as well, the metal cooler figure looks really cool. Um, all of the mechanical detail and the little lines and slashes and especially the paint job that they use for this guy. I'm really hoping that it ends up turning out this good looking. Especially the tail looks so good, right? Even though it is the same general sculpt for these figures, um, you can tell that they changed up the sculpt of the tail a little bit. So it's obviously a lot more squared off. Uh, which is interesting. I will say, I'm kind of hoping that that means that his isn't a little bit squared off, because the way that the lighting looks, it almost kind of looks like that. I'm hoping that's just an optical illusion, though. And then, of course, we have the boy Beerus here. Um, Beerus is he's, uh, he's all right. <laughs> he definitely looks better than the original production images that I feel like I remember seeing of him. Um, but he's nothing crazy, right? Like, I would definitely like to get this guy, because I have a severe lack of Beerus and Whis figures. In fact, I Maybe don't even have a single one. Wow, that's crazy. Um, but he does look pretty good. However, I think probably the other figures in the set are definitely a little bit more exciting than him. But definitely not bad looking. Um, it's always cool to get a super high quality HD look at these figures before we actually get them released. Okay, so this is also the smaller prizes for that same Ichiban Kuji here. Um, we have Prize G, which is some clear stands here. Um, very interesting. We have the Family Kamehameha, which, I mean, that makes sense. Also, Dokkan Art Alert. <laughs> I know it's literally just from the Family Kamehameha, but especially Gohan here looks like he's ripped right out of the, um, the card art for it. Obviously, this is that iconic Frieza and Goku panel from Namek, but instead it's Golden Frieza and Blue Goku, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't know what's on his... Is that supposed to be his logo? His logo looks really weird on his chest, but it is at like an angle that you wouldn't be able to see it very well, so I guess that makes sense. Um, we have, what even are these? Um, I don't even know what this is, if I'm being honest with you, because we have towels here, right? We have the Kuji towels here, which these are like the mini ones. Um, and then these are obviously the longer ones. These ones aren't as crazy. I will say with the Kuji towels, some of these have really cool artwork on them. I think this is one where they're lacking a little bit. Um, the artwork is very basic and also kind of feels like it isn't done by the best promo artist. I think out of all these, I definitely like Janemba's the best and probably Turles is the best. Beerus's is, I'm pretty sure, just like a recreation of an older Beerus art piece. So it doesn't look too bad and it kind of makes me feel a little bit nostalgic for that specific piece of Beerus art. Um, but I have no idea. Well, I, I know what that is. Those are all cups. I mean, these look good. These are all using basically pre-existing art and just tracing over it. That's why it looks so good. Um, Gogeta's looks really cool. They had to put them in there somehow. If they were going to do a movie set without Gogeta, they had to shrug the boy in there somehow. <laughs> That's kind of funny. But yeah, these cups do look pretty cool. I would love to own a Gogeta and Janemba cup. That would be sick. Um, and then we have these, which maybe these are like mouse pads or something like that. Again, not exactly sure. No one in the comments is uh, telling me either. So unless they're not mouse pads, chat, you can fill me in in the comment section. But again, they're very simple, uh, whatever they are. 
So this is pretty cool. Uh, we have the OG DB Matchmakers posters right here, um, which are pretty cool, keeping with the weird circle swirl motif um, that all of the Matchmakers boxes have. I quite like this, and obviously these posters look pretty cool. It's kind of funny seeing the very small figure in the background, uh, where he's just like, woo, you know, in the background. I think Goku looks a little bit more like he's moving forward than... Um, than King Piccolo's does, but yeah, it almost looks like a in-between screen for Dragon Ball, like a commercial break screen, which is kind of funny. Okay, so we have a couple more pictures of these guys. I think we did take a small look at these bad boys last time. Um, these figures don't look crazy, in my opinion. It is cool that we are getting more King Piccolo figures and Kid Goku figures in general. I will say the paint job on these doesn't look the best. I think that the sculpting is fine. Um, but there's a couple of paint details that I'm noticing, right? Like, King Piccolo's colors look very flat. Um, the, like, rough edges aren't really painted that well on the Namekian skin. Goku's eyes are also very cheaply painted on, it kind of looks like. And I feel like with how far his eyes are to the side, it gives him a very weird expression, especially with the big open mouth that he has. Also, why is the power pole and the power pole holder red? That definitely seems like that it's an error and almost makes this feel like a little bit more of like a cheap action figure rather than a proper price figure. This is kind of unfortunate, um, I will say. So if you are aware, and we took a look at this the last couple times, uh, the boxes for the matchmakers, right, they always have uh, this little swirl meme going on where when you put these together, um, sorry, it's taking a while to load, by the way, it's with all these tabs at the top, it's having a heart attack. <laughs> Even if I have a good PC, Chrome still eats up RAM like crazy. Um, but you can kind of see it through here, right? They sort of line up next to each other um, like this, right? The swirls go together and the actual like matchmakers logo matches up here, which is pretty cool. But unfortunately, because of the black box that they're starting to do with these now, uh, it doesn't actually line up anymore, which is really unfortunate because that was definitely something pretty cool. I mean, again, like, it's not the biggest deal because it doesn't affect the figures in any way. Um, but, I mean, packaging is important when it comes to products like this. And, I mean, especially for me, a person who's a collector, I keep all my boxes. Maybe I'm a maniac for that. But, you know, it's cool to see when they do nice packaging. So, it's a little bit of a shame uh, they decided to go this route. Moving on, do have a couple more pictures of some of the Android Coogee stuff. I'm not going to go through this too crazy heavy because I think that we took a look at a little bit of this last time um, as well. We have a ton of pictures from a bunch of different things here. But I do want to take this time to note um, that there is actually an official Ichiban Kuji Twitter. It's called Ichiban Kuji Shop. So, if you are interested in following the official account to see uh, when new figures are going up and stuff like that, uh, definitely go hit up that account. That's the official Japanese account, by the way. Um, this is pretty cool, though. Definitely a nice little glass case setup. And what I like looking at about these is these are different ways that, like, stores and things like that, like, set up the figures, right? at different locations and stuff to sort of advertise them. I um, mean, not just like stores, also just like little displays of all this kind of stuff. But it's also cool because it gives you some ideas for um, your actual displays. I love this on the wall with all the different like just art pieces sort of just like thrown on the wall basically and like taped where they are. I think that's really cool. Um, but yeah, it gives you a pretty decent idea on some different display options, some different like little things that you can use to display these different pieces, right? This one kind of looks like they just threw it down. I'm not going to lie. The one who made, the person who set up that shop uh, definitely was lazy a little bit for sure. But you can see some of the extra um, prizes here too, which is pretty cool um, with the little background clear sleeves, some of the little art pieces. Obviously, we have the towels as well. Um, I definitely think the Capsule Corp one looks really, really cool. And I like the Lucky foods one as well also very nice they had some of the characters standing on them before the 18 one actually looks really nice that art is definitely pretty good because um, sometimes lately on the towels there's the minifigures by the way um, on the towels they have been uh, lacking a little bit unfortunately this is a really nice one look at this look at this glass case here bro that's sick i really like this towel too where it's just this basic white with the small cell motif on the bottom very very cool it's also nice to see all the androids together as well, um, you know, just having them all side by side. And yeah, by the way, I know we talked about this. Here's an actual picture of it. Um, here's Dr. Giro with his sort of like hat dome removed, right? You can actually see the brain sculpted on the inside, which is a super neat detail because they definitely could have just made this an entirely separate figure considering they did that with 
Cyborg Tau. <laughs> but they didn't, and they actually made it uh, just a feature of the figure, which is really cool. So thank you, Bandai, for that. Moving on, um, BOS Gohan Final Big Increase leads into 827 Game Station orders. Wow. That's, uh, that puts him just behind DXF Gamma. They got just under 900. Any increases now will be minor. Probably won't overtake them. It's still amazing numbers. Yeah, the Gohan hype is absolutely real right now. Um, 100%. Here's another little setup. This one I wanted to show you just because um, this is what it looks like at an actual like store where you could play the Ichiban Kuji. And this is what it would look like on the shelf. You have the little poster here. And then you can pay the 850 yen to play the Ichiban Kuji. And try and win one of these prizes um, off the shelf. Which is pretty cool. And it looks like this guy won the Cell Towel when he played. Um, moving on here. Hmm. Okay, so some good and bad news here, and again, it's going to be a little bit spread out through here, so I apologize. But, here is the packaging for your boy Gohan, um, now releasing for Asia. Um, you can see that it is the basic SH figure arts packaging, nothing too crazy. Um, but one thing to note is that his face looks a little bit weird. We're going to see a zoom in on that in just a little bit, don't you worry. Um, but this is the proper packaging here, which I mean, you know, looks just like normal SH figure arts packaging, nothing too crazy here. Uh, this is a solid Edgeworks Gohan review from Omacha Hedgehala. Um, he does fantastic work in reviewing Dragon Ball figures. I won't take too crazy long of a look at this, and we'll actually look at some other stuff while this loads, because since this is a Japanese website, it takes a little bit longer to load. But he does very detailed figure reviews. Moving on real quick, though, uh, the Clear Eyes Gohan. Um, we have taken a look at this guy in a couple of videos now. Uh, he releases uh, the third week of November in Japan, which is pretty cool. Um, I know a lot of people are looking forward to this figure, including myself. Um, so I'm definitely going to be curious to see what the final pictures of that guy look like. November Q Pasaka Videl case ratio will be a separate case of 35 for Asia. Again, no Western release, which is very interesting. I guess it makes sense that the A prize is going to have more, um, considering that that is the normal color scheme. Because uh, this one is like the off color, right? And then I believe this is what her actual outfit looked like in the anime. Yeah, so Omacha Hedchala, um, this is what the boxes look like. He always does a super detailed review of these figures. It'll take a little bit more time to load because, again, this is a Japanese website and I have a million and a half tabs open. This was pretty cool. Um, Baggy Saiyan got a bunch of these posters for the anniversary Goku and Vegeta. Um, and these are basically what they show in the actual like store that you could, um, or not the store, I guess it would be more like the arcade, right? Because obviously these are prize figures in Japan and you get them out of crane games and stuff like that. These would be in the actual arcades themselves or in the actual arcade machines. These little posters to just show off, hey, here's the figure. I'm going to actually try and find one of these myself. I have the Gogeta one from the fifth anniversary and I think I have the Gogeta, um, or the Vegito one it's the Vegito Blue STR LR one, but I don't think I have Blue Evo, so I'll have to um, see if I can get my hands on that. All right, so this is a little unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen. It is a little bit of a stinky picture, so I will give them that, but this is what the Ultimate Gohan looks like. Um, in the box through the clear little window. This is very disappointing considering everyone and their mother was looking forward to this figure. This figure sold out so quick. This is probably one of the fastest like sold out SH figure arts figures I've ever seen, especially for a over-the-counter release. Um, and he looks pretty derpy. Um, again, we'll have to see when we get some more clear pictures of him um, out of the actual box in the hands of consumers. Uh, but it is not looking good for your boy, which is very unfortunate um, because obviously he had a ton of hype surrounding him. Uh, pretty unfortunate. This was a cool little detail that I wanted to point out, by the way. We have a little bit more pictures of the Android Kuji, but there's a specific picture I wanted to point out. As well, also, too, you can see a little bit of a scale um, with these specific Goku and Vegeta Kuji figures, which is pretty cool. But... A lot of neat sculpting details that I don't know if you noticed on these figures. Um, 17 actually has his gun, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, as well, he actually does have the watch on his wrist, even though they definitely could have forgot that. 
um, a super small detail, but it's right there, which is pretty cool. Um, and as well, on the bottom of their shoes, it actually has the Red Ribbon Army logo, which is super neat. And obviously, that is something that you may not even have noticed or frankly didn't even really need to be on the figure. But it's little details like this that make me love Dragon Ball figures and collecting them. It's what makes me so passionate about this hobby is little details like this. Because this shows you that the person who sculpted this figure really cared about what they were doing, right? They cared to take the time to research and put in all the little different details of these characters, right? Very, very cool. I will say the leather also looks like actual leather in the way that it's textured. Very, very nice. It looks like the Sawed Edgeworks Gohan page finally loaded. So yeah, so we have some high quality images of this guy. We can now see the back of his head, which I have seen a couple of figures that do the Super Saiyan 1 Gohan hair like this. I'm not the biggest fan of it. It definitely gives him the... I don't even know what hairstyle to really describe that as. Uh, obviously based off of this manga panel right here, uh, which is pretty cool that you can see the side-by-side -side comparison there. Um, definitely not a bad sculpted figure. Again, I know that we were holding out with bated breath considering that this figure was made in Vietnam and typically the figures from Vietnam don't uh, usually turn out that well, unfortunately. But honestly, he turned out pretty alright. Um, I think that maybe the back of his head is a little bit too wide, um, if I do say so myself, but it's definitely not the worst thing in the world. Um, I believe this is taking a comparison with another figure here. Um... But yeah, just talking about some different small sculpting details. Again, this is all in Japanese, but Omocha Hedgela goes really in-depth with the different sculpt reviews on uh, the individual's website who runs it, which is pretty cool. But yeah, overall, um, definitely very nice. And Super Saiyan 2 Gohan as well. Obviously, he gets rid of that problem with the weird haircut at the back. Um, because of course, oh, these images just aren't going to load. Okay, well, we'll move on for now. Um, but it is based off of this shot here, which is interesting because I originally thought that this was just like, oh, it's the same pose that they base it off of one of the forms. Um, but no, cool that they actually um, base it off of two specific manga panels. Okay, so let me make sure that we're at the right spot here. We have some final pictures of the BOS Gohan here on display. Um, not bad looking, definitely a lot better looking funny enough than even the picture that we saw in the beginning. They actually fixed my complaint with the teeth. I think that the teeth look a lot better now, um, than they did before for sure. Um, and even though obviously the angle is a very specific one, um, I quite like the way that this turned out. I feel like this looks like Gohan. It looks really, really good. Um, this is an example of a figure that got better in the time of the production images which is kind of crazy because usually that doesn't happen nowadays but very cool that it ended up happening this time uh, this is a quick look at the android 16 um i believe that there's a little detail that i wanted to share with you here if i remember um correctly obviously we have the red ribbon logo uh sort of pasted on there and he looks pretty good ah so this was the thing that i wanted to talk about right so this person talked about how um, it's a little bit unfortunate because with the hair, um, on the paint, there are some little white spots. It's kind of hard to see in this specific image, but if we take a little bit of a zoom, you can see that there's a little white spot and that's just not a speck on the camera. That is a lack of paint on that section of the figure. So kind of unfortunate. And that is another side of, uh, sign rather, excuse me, a Bandai is very cheap quality, um, when it comes to these things. So very unfortunate, but overall the figure definitely looks pretty good. Yeah, so uh, on the topic of these, we have another angle um, of this guy. That's what it's supposed to look like. And this is apparently uh, what the figure actually looks like in the box. More of a straight on angle um, with a little bit more higher quality of an image. He doesn't look that great, if I'm being honest. I feel like his eyebrows are not high enough. His forehead is too big. His face is too elongated, almost like forming a duck bill. Not that exaggerated, but you get my point where I'm sort of going with that. <sighs> Very unfortunate, because obviously people are really excited for this guy. Uh, again, I will wait to hold my final judgment until I actually have the figure in hand, because I will be buying this guy. But... We'll have to see. I suppose the nice thing is if you buy the SH Figure Arts Gamma 1 and 2, you'll get to replace this head with the $80 one. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
Anyway, moving on, uh, we have some info about the Android Kuji. 16 is already under 6,000 yen, and 17 is just above. I wish them being in the 5K range, the old standard 36 Ichiban show price um, should end up happening. So they should lower over time, which is pretty cool. Um, Baggy did note here, too, that you can also request sellers to send it without the box, so the shipping won't be as much. Um, but yeah, very cool. Um, I'm glad these figures are going down a little bit because obviously, uh, since they're not bringing these guys over in the traditional manner, um, you are going to have to import these figures if you want them. I'll probably import them at some point. They're not like a high priority on my list right now, um, but definitely at some point. Okay, so this is really strange. Uh, we talked about in the last video, this is a direct update to the Gogeta point from last video where... There was a very weird discrepancy with the release of this guy, right? They said that he was going to be releasing uh, pretty soon, I believe, like I think July or August or something like that um, in Japan and in other Asian countries. And when they announced him in the little Dokkan announcement video, people were like, oh, he's coming to the U.S., and Baggy was like, well, probably not because it would have not made sense that, you know, they're releasing this guy later when they could have just put it in the information earlier and then release them now especially when the anniversary is actually happening so to capitalize on the hype of it but no they decided to add a u.s release date for november <laughs> why i don't know it's really weird this is definitely one of the more weirder bandai shenanigans that we've come across not just in this series but i think that i've heard of them doing in terms of listings and stuff like that let me take a drink of water i definitely need it Stay hydrated, amigos. But yeah, he's going to be $85 um, at the standard selling price. Um, again, very strange that he wasn't listed with the rest of the listings for this figure. But yeah, he'll be coming out in November for $85, bucks, which is pretty cool. Um, I know, unfortunately, he's already sold out on Big Bad Toy Store. There are some other websites that you can cop this guy from. Um, so definitely keep an eye out as well. He should be on store shelves. I think like Box Lunch might probably end up carrying this guy. Maybe GameStop will also end end up carrying this guy in november so keep an eye out for them um but since he's releasing over here in the states it shouldn't be too hard to get this guy for sure um so bos gohan japanese release date delayed to the 28th probably means he will come under the august block of figures for the western release unless he releases in asia soon after so we'll probably have to wait for august to roll around to get this guy unfortunately um but that is okay we have okay so this is really cool so talking about the upcoming movie kuji uh from earlier right talking about the high quality images that we saw of all of the boys we actually have some in-person pictures um from a japanese display um that someone was kind enough to take some pictures and post them on twitter for us to see and baggy retweeted these um so this is of course the last one broly this figure looks a lot better in person in these pictures than he did in the original production images. Um, in the production images, he looked kind of janky and the pose was really weird. But honestly, in person, I mean, technically not in person because it's a photo. But of course, this person is taking a picture of the actual figure and it's not just a edited up production image. This looks really good. I mean, I expected the sculpting to be good. The pose was just the weird thing for me. And even the pose is still <laughs> pretty goofy, all things considered. I think it definitely looks a lot better in full execution. And I have to say, even just regardless of the pose, wow! The sculpting is immaculate on this figure! I know that a lot of people were disappointed because the Dragon Ball Super Broly was one of these figures that was super crazy sculpted with the Kuji from, I think it was what, last year or two years ago now? Um, I took a look at him semi-recently-ish on this channel. Um, but this figure is obviously in the sort of same vein of sculpting style as that Dragon Ball Super Broly. And the crazy sculpting on here just shines through like on the gold let's take a little bit of a uh, zoomed in image of this because unfortunately the, the zoomed in image one is just kind of a little bit blurry so it's harder to see some of the details um even his face doesn't look too bad by the way it's a little bit too skinny for my liking but it's definitely not the worst that i've ever seen right he definitely could have more of that anime boy chin 
So, first of all, the gold detail on the gauntlets. Look at the scratching on the gauntlets. The cracking on the gauntlets. Looks like it has been battle damaged for sure on his boots as well. You can see Cooler's Cranium down there, by the way. Looks super cool. I love the battle damage detail on this, even on the in-between section of the boot. Looks really nice on Broly's gold necklace as well. There's all these scratches and stuff like that. Um, on the actual cloak part that Broly wears, there's a lot of nice weathering detail, a lot of nice shadow effects on this guy. Very, very good looking. I really, really like the way that this figure is turning out. The legs also look fantastic. I love the way that the pants are ripped. They look fantastic. It actually looks like fabric ripping. It kind of reminds me of cake in a weird way, but definitely looks fantastic. Of course, Broly's skin as well. You can see all these crazy veins shooting through Broly. Um, definitely very, very nice looking as well. The very deep scars on Broly. Of course, this is supposed to be second movie Broly, so it makes sense that he has the mark on his chest uh, from when Goku punched him in the first movie. But yeah, super cool looking. Again, even the face doesn't look as bad as I kind of thought it was going to look, especially in tandem with this goofy pose. It looks pretty good. The hair looks very basic, I will say, which is weird because the rest of the figure is so crazy sculpted. But the hair sculpt is, like, Pretty simple, pretty simplistic. It's still a little bit more lines than some other Dragon Ball figures have, but definitely pretty simple. Um, the worst thing that I think on here, honestly, is probably the earrings, which is weird. They almost look a little bit too big um, for my liking. Nef definitely not like anything that I'm like, oh, you know, but of course we're analyzing the figure. So yeah, I'm really excited for this guy. I think he's going to look fantastic on the shelf, especially if the quality is exactly how this one is, which again, we'll have to see when he actually releases. But if he stays like this, I would absolutely be okay with that. All right, so moving on from Broly, um, we did get some higher quality images of Goten and Trunks. Um, this one, or Goten and Trunks, wow, Gohan and Goten, glad I caught myself there. Um, here is Gohan, as you can see, he looks pretty good. Um, again, I think that his teeth are still maybe a little bit too big for my liking. Um, nothing like that really turns me off from the figure or anything like that. But, um, yeah, he looks all right. I think that the eyes are maybe a little bit weird, but it also could be the angle of the picture as well. But definitely not too bad. I like the overall sculpt as well in the figure. I mean, it's pretty basic, but um, still very nice looking. We also have an image of Goten here too, which is pretty cool. Um, Goten definitely looks really good. Obviously, we don't get Goten figures very often, um, so it's nice to see one when we get one. Um, where, where did he go? He's so small. There we go. And I will say, I think his face is pretty good. Maybe his eyes are a little bit too big, but when it comes to Goten figures, I don't think we, well, we don't really have that many at all, but I could don't even think I can recall one where he's like, um, angry, right? So this looks good. I definitely like the way that this one turned out. Um, I'm hoping that he's not crazy expensive because obviously uh, they've been kind of overpricing these smaller figures recently. But I would definitely like to get this figure um, if I can. He's pretty cool. Moving on, we have some of the villains on display, which is really cool. We have Metal Cooler here, um, and it looks like my uh, my sort of cries of sorrows of the tail potentially being sculpted weird. Uh, he looks fine for sure um, with the actual way that this looks sculpted. These two look great next to each other. Um, I think that the Metal Cooler actually looks way better in my opinion. Something about Cooler's face, it's like maybe the sculpt of the eyes look a little bit weird. I don't know, something about his eyes look a little bit weird, and maybe his head is almost a little bit too oval-shaped, which I know is weird to say, considering his head is literally a oval, but um, they both look really good, and I think Metal Cooler looks fantastic. I'm really excited to see this detail up close. Um, the one thing I am a little bit disappointed with is I do see a little bit of shine on the white bits, and that kind of leads me to believe that this is painted a little bit more cheaper and with cheaper plastic, so hoping that's not the case in the final product, but... Only time will tell. Okay, so we have the boy Beerus here. Um, nothing too crazy for Beerus. Again, it is just a Beerus sculpted figure, right? But I mean, he looks pretty good. Um, I think that they definitely do a good job capturing the cat-like appearance of Beerus very well here. Um, this figure makes him feel a lot more feline, whereas other drawings kind of like take away that sort of, I don't want to say aesthetic, but like feeling of how Beerus looks. Um, but yeah, no, he, he looks pretty good. Um, I mean, I think they do a pretty good job overall. They got the proper shoe look for him. Um, this, I don't know what this is called. I guess like the garb of the gods, right? 
Um, and then as well on his shoulders too. Yeah, looks pretty good. Definitely a pretty decent Beerus figure. Um, I kind of wish there was a Whis to complement it, but that's okay. I apologize. I accidentally opened a couple of tabs uh, twice. That was my bad. Turles, though, uh, we also got to see a up-close look of ya boy here. Um, so... He did look a little bit goofy in, <laughs> in some of the original images that we were kind of taking a look at. Here, he definitely looks a lot better in person. I will say, his face almost looks like comic book rather than manga. Is that weird to say? Let me know in the comments if you agree with me on that. That's really the only way I can describe it. I don't think it looks bad, but it almost looks like a artist's rendition of Turles's face rather than actually Turles's face. I don't think it looks bad by any means, but it just definitely looks a little bit like not exact. Um, but the sculpt of the rest of his body looks good. I mean, they should have Saiyan armor nailed down by now considering we had the Nap and Vegeta from the, uh, almost the Namek Saga from the Saiyan Saga, um, come out. So yeah, they can even just reuse those assets, which may even be what they did here. You know, it's kind of hard to tell because of course it's just Saiyan armor, but the rest of this, though, looks sculpted nice. I will say the fruit, unfortunately, I don't really focus on that in these images, but it looks good. Um, Terlis's scouter as well also looks like it's very well placed. I'm hoping that they end up all looking like this because I know on Vegeta, um, with his sculptor, mine drew, or his sculptor, his scouter droops a little bit. So I'm hoping that on the actual figure that has it stuck in his head where you can't remove it, um, it would obviously be in the right position there. So yeah, pretty good looking overall for sure. Um, Janemba, oh my boy, oh my boy, how are you doing? Oh man, okay, so this is one of the ones that I was obviously the most excited for, um, considering that we have not had a Janemba figure in like literally ever. Um, I think he looks really, really good. Obviously, they gave him a pretty basic expression, not like the crazed Janemba expression. Um, but I mean, when he first appears on the scene, he does kind of give this look. And I do like as well, maybe the duck lips are a little bit off-putting to some people, but this is how he looks in the movie. He has those sort of like, mm -hmm, sort of lips, you know? Um, but the sculpt on this looks really good. I will say the shiny paint on how it looks on the purple and the tummy is a little bit off-putting because that does look a little bit cheap, but the actual sculpt itself looks fantastic. I like the little scratches and stuff like that, just the very minimal in there, but I love the very, like, alien look of Janemba, right? His weird chest hole. <laughs> I think it all looks really good, um, and the feet also are going to be very interesting to see too, because obviously Janemba has some very um, like specific feet to him as well. The white like shin guards <laughs> that Janemba has, um, you can't see them very well in this image, but obviously um, this figure also has those. Uh, looks like very well sculpted on him too, which is pretty cool, um, and on his arms as well. He does also have a little bit of, uh, like, sort of, I don't want to say notches, but, like, the very uh, interesting angled, like, antennas that Janemba has. It looks like those are also sculpted there um, with a lot of attention to detail. You can see that they almost come to, like, a point and sort of stick out um, a little bit there. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see this guy uh, when he actually finally is in the hands of consumers. I am pretty excited for him to release for sure. You can also see a very nice look of Metal Cooler's tail there as well uh, in the sort of side there. Very excited for your boy Janemba, though. Okay, so moving on from the movie QG, um, we do have the History Box Goku Volume 3. Now, the History Box line has been filled with conundrums and sadness. <laughs> the History Box line, um, I believe, was the line that brought us the Bye Guys Goku, right? Um, no, no, no. Yes, yes, that was the History Box line. And obviously this... Uh, is from the initial transformation on Namek for Goku here. Um, and he looks pretty good. Again, this is another figure out of Vietnam rather than made out of China. And typically, um, those figures don't end up looking as good. But I gotta say, this guy actually looks pretty decent. He's not perfect by any means. It's certainly not the best Super Saiyan Goku figure that I've ever seen. But it's good. It's pretty good. I, I would maybe consider getting it. I have quite a few Super Saiyan Goku figures already, so I don't really need them. I do like the appeal of the base, but the History Box line is also really small. That's the only other thing. It's like really tiny. We do have the GX Materia Gohan here. 
Obviously, we've gotten to see a couple of sneak peeks on this guy. Um, but he, I will say, I don't know if I'm a fan of his face. The rest of these figures, I really like the face sculpts on them. But Gohan looks a little bit weird. Maybe it's just the angle that he's at. Maybe his eyes are a little bit too big. I do notice that Bandai likes to do that. Uh, with figures like the SH Figuarts, Namek, like armor, Gohan is really big in the eye department. So, going to be interesting to see how the final version of this figure looks, but not too bad. Definitely nothing that would make me, like, not want to get it. I really like the GX material line, and it's definitely a line that I would like to complete. Um, especially considering, I think, in the modern day of Dragon Ball, it's definitely Dragon Ball's most high-quality figure line. And probably their most interesting, um, for sure. Moving on, we did have a quick look at the Clear Rise Gohan and Vegeta. Um, by the way, keep in mind, the stuff that's being taken pictures of um, where it has the Japanese text is not from uh, Comic-Con because it would be in English there. Um, but, yeah, the Clear Rise Vegeta and Gohan. Uh, Vegeta still looks kind of janky, if I'm being honest. I think it's more so his face. I think his body doesn't look too bad, although his shoulder pads are very, like, thinned out, which is weird. But I think Gohan looks really good. If I didn't have a bunch of Gohan figures with this exact pose, I might consider getting this guy. He's definitely a decent choice. Um, one interesting thing to note, though, is that he does seem a lot smaller, as well as Vegeta, too, than the rest of the Clear Rise line. As you can see, um, we have the Rosé standing over here, and he looks much taller than these two, even just in scale. So that's kind of interesting to note there. Moving on, this is definitely a great tweet for those of you who are potentially looking to get um, the Matchmaker's Goku, right? As you can see, um, the GX Materia Goku is so much bigger than this guy. Like, that is a very big difference in size. Holy cow. Um, it looks a lot more so when they're both on their little stands here, but for sure... Um, when it comes to them next to each other, you can see the GX material one is just a lot bigger in terms of scale. I don't think that because the figure is smaller, it necessarily means that it's like less quality or less like valuable by any means. But I definitely think that if you are picking up the Kuji Goku and especially this GX material Goku, I think you can pass on the matchmakers one unless you are not getting the gx material one then of course you know you could definitely pick this guy because he's pretty decent um definitely not a bad figure for sure but yeah size comparison is definitely something to note there uh for sure so this was pretty cool um i talked a little bit before about how i thought that these figures uh, looked better on the actual like images of the figure that we saw rather than uh the production images that we saw and it was pretty cool to see that they actually did fix uh, the gapping issues that these figures had. As you can see, the hair kind of looks like it's almost disconnected a little bit from the head uh, in these original images. There's huge gaps there. Um, but now it looks a lot more actually like stuck together on the head, which is very nice. I do think that funny enough, Goten maybe looks a little bit better in his actual form. And Gohan's like just face looks a little bit better in his original production image. But that could also just be the angle kind of playing tricks on your head, right? Nonetheless, though, um, yeah, these figures look really good. I'm hoping in the hands of consumers they're going to end up looking like this. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is how they should look. But again, with Bandai, you never know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, very cool that they fixed some of the QC issues on those. Yeah, so Baggy was talking about this as well. Um, definitely some very interesting things to know about the History Box Goku here. Um, muscles and the... I don't know if I can say that without getting hit by Susan, so just, just, just read it. <laughs> um, are more defined and less hair gapping. Um, but in true Vietnam factory fashion, there's got to be something wrong, and that's the base uh, where they just went... Oh! I didn't even notice that. Yeah, so there's supposed to be blue paint because obviously on Namek, like, you know, the grass is blue. Um, but, yeah, they, they just didn't add that in here. I mean, not as big of a deal because I'd rather the figure have more stuff right with it than the base, for sure, if they're going to be some weird balancing act there. But, yeah, I, I like the final version of this figure better than the original production image, uh, which is a pretty rare thing nowadays when it comes to Bandai, but... Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, this is also a very darker picture, too. But they definitely fixed the QEC issue of the hair gapping. Um, and very interesting, yeah, that they made that more defined on Goku. Quite interesting. I'm also thinking that this is just an angle trick, but his face looks better in the final version. At least I think so. I feel like it looks more anime accurate. 
Yeah, so this was a little bit unfortunate. Um, September matchmakers were due before GX Materia Gohan, but their finals were not shown off. Very strange. Um, don't know why that's the case, but um, we'll have to see what that ends up meaning for these figures. I mean, I'm sure people are pretty excited for these, considering that obviously, um, you know, these are pretty rare characters to get in figure form. So we'll end up seeing what happens with these guys in a future news video for sure. Hmm. We have another picture. Oh, geez. I'm glad that Twitter decided to cut that image off. Thanks. <laughs> With Broly here, we have a basically more, I don't want to say accurate angle, but like the angle is closer to what the angle was on the production images for sure. And yeah, I think this guy looks a lot better in the final images for sure. Um, I think that they definitely did a better job on this final sculpt here. You can also see too uh, with this image as well. Granted, it's not as high quality as the other one, but there's a little bit less like blur effect on it. Um, you can see how well the hand is sculpted. The other gold gauntlet looks very nice. Um, it almost looks like the metal is bending to Broly's strength, which, I mean, makes sense, right? You can see a lot more detail on the cloak as well. Um, looks really, really great. Again, I love the way that they sculpted this guy. I think I'm going to get this guy. Initially, I wasn't going to, but now that I've seen this final image it looks so much better than the original so that's good to see also that that broly drawing is up uh, the brad promo artist means thank you again <laughs> um this was another image of turles again nothing too crazy different but i figured i'd just throw it in here because um at least now right we have a little bit more high quality uh, view of the fruit kind of not really but i mean it just looks like the fruit of the tree might it's not too bad um but yeah he looks all right again his face just looks kind of blocky um and a little bit goofy in my opinion but nothing terrible Oh yeah, so this was something interesting to note. A Takamatsu actually sculpted Turles. Um, if you are familiar, Takamatsu sculpted a lot of the figures um, that we have come to know and love in the modern era. He did, uh, I believe, the entire um, Saiyan Saga line, if not the actual Saiyans themselves. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, definitely makes sense uh, with the details that Baggy points out, right? The muscle definition uh, is the same, right? The um, sculpt on the tail is very similar. Obviously, the armor, like I said before, literally looks the same as the other Saiyan. So it definitely makes sense that it's him. Um, but yeah, I, I like this a lot. Funny enough, uh, JQ actually noticed it as well. Uh, that the sculpt is very similar to Nappa, but yeah, definitely very good looking for sure. I feel like he looks less goofy on the production image than this image right here. I don't know why. I don't even see that much of a crazy difference here either. Um, I don't, I don't know. Something about his face looks a little bit more blocky and a little bit more like he 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 he. Um, so these are just a couple more angles of Janemba here, looking at a little bit of a more down angle here. Um, and what's cool about these, actually, um, is as, as these load, right, we can actually get a better look at Janemba's feet. Um, his face does look a little bit interesting from this angle, I will say. It doesn't look like the same as it did before, which this is literally the same figure, so I don't know why. Um, but yeah, definitely a pretty good look, and let me skip to the next tab for the moment um, while that image is deciding to load. Okay, well, we're just going to cut here and wait for it to load. Of course, as soon as I say that, everything decides to load. Thank you, Google Chrome. Anyway, Janemba looks good. Um, I definitely like this angle here. Um, again, we can also get a little bit of a better look at the legs of Janemba, which I think they did a good job of getting his weird single toe um, and also the shin guards that he has, which I don't think they're actually shin guards, but, you know, they kind of look like shin guards, right? Um, I think that they actually look pretty good. Um, they definitely did a good job sculpting that for sure. Um, I think it just overall captures the look of Janemba very well. Interesting. It also looks like that his tail, I'm assuming that's going to be multiple pieces is why there's a line there. I'm wondering if either that's just like a sculpting error or it's just going to be like that on the final figure. I hope not. If it is, then maybe hopefully it would have a little bit of articulation where you could move the tail a little bit. That would be kind of cool. Um, but, I mean, I hope that that production line isn't there on the final version of the figure for sure. It is kind of interesting with the expression that they gave him. I know his mouth does look like that, but it does look a little bit silly. But, I mean, that's also just Janemba himself. We have another high-quality image of Broly and Goten and Gohan here. Again, every picture that I see with these guys, they look better and better. Gohan looks even pretty good here. Goten looks also really nice. Broly looks, oh, very, very nice. I like that a lot. 
Definitely very, very good looking. Here's another angle of cooler. I think that his eyes look a little bit better here. I don't know why. Again, I know this is literally the same like location that these pictures are taken at. Uh, but something about him just looks a little bit here. Again, certain cameras obviously can make figures look a little bit different. Um, because, of course, you know, the quality of the camera, different aspects about it. And so, again, again it looks like Janema's smiling here, which he's not on the actual figure. Very strange. But, yeah, very cool looking stuff. Um, this was also a, another display um, at this particular location. Yeah, so here's the history box line so far. I'm sure that most of you remember this Goku. This is, of course, uh, when he's launching the Spirit Bomb. Then we had this atrocity to mankind, the History Box Volume 2 that everybody was mega excited for and ended up absolutely flopping. Um, and then, of course, we have the new History Box Volume 3 Goku. And I gotta say, yeah, he's the best looking one out of all three, if I may be so bold. Um, I mean, base Goku looks good, but uh, yeah, I definitely think that... Um, Super Saiyan Goku here on the end looks pretty good. And again, these figures are a lot smaller compared to normal price figures. Um, and Goku himself, the Super Saiyan one, right, the Volume 3 one that we've been looking at this whole time, is even smaller than these other two. So he is going to be really, really tiny when you actually get him out of the box. Um, so this is just a quick lot confirmation for the movie Kuji here. Um, as you can see, prize A1, prize B1, C2. It's ba literally what Baggy says right here, right? D1, E1, and so on and so forth. This is just how many of each of these figures and the small prizes that each location that, that is going to get this Ichiban Kuji is going to get, you know, with the actual tickets where you can win them from the lottery. Uh, we had a quick Matchmaker's Piccolo tweet here, and the reason why I include this is because this is apparently the actual sculptor uh, for this figure, which is pretty interesting here. Uh, Joe, <laughs> I guess is his name, that's what it says on his profile picture, um, but apparently this is the sculptor for this figure, which is interesting. Um, Baggy was tweeting about that this guy had a Twitter, and I was like, oh yeah, slide it my way, so I figured I would include this for the video if you want to uh, follow this guy on Twitter, definitely go hit him up. Uh, seems to be a little bit of a newer sculptor on the block, I think. Um, I haven't really seen too much else um, from him or people really talk about him. I don't know why he is just going with this whole Joe motif, but I mean, hey. It also seems like he sculpted the Android 18 as well, um, which is pretty interesting. So that makes sense why it doesn't perfectly match up with um, the 17 either, but... I know we were talking about in the last couple of videos that I felt like 18's face didn't look correctly and I think that that kind of makes sense because it's more based off of this specific piece of art where 17 I feel like looks more accurate to his overall look in the anime. I always found this picture of 18 to be a little bit like off from her overall design but that's what this figure is based off of so the reason why her face looks like that makes a lot more sense now. But yeah it seems he's quite literally brand new right his first tweet um, was here when he talks about the figure initially. So, yeah. Um, pretty cool, though. Definitely go follow him um, if you are interested. If I remember, I'll leave a link in the description, but there's a lot to leave links in here, so I apologize if I forget. Um, so this is also kind of interesting. So Hazy isn't sculpting the Clear Eyes line anymore. Their name wasn't on the box for Goku Black, and they didn't tweet anything out on, like, the blues. Um, and so the Great Salmon is undoubtedly sculpted by the Small Foot Sculptor. That is what we're calling this guy, because we don't have an actual name for them. Other than the obvious small feet, the ears are extremely similar. Um, again, this is a new sculptor on the block from what it seems. We're just calling him the Small Foot Sculptor because, well, he sculpts feet very small for some reason um, but yeah the ear sculpt is definitely extremely similar on these two and I quite like the sculpt on this Gohan so I definitely think that this Goku will turn out uh, pretty good as well uh, and as well um, uh, incidentally the Solid Edgework Goku Black also has a small foot sculptor's warp too as does the Ritsuden trunks so it seems he's been getting a fair amount of work recently which is cool because uh, I think people pretty much are resoundingly liking this Goku Black figure I mean I definitely like him um, and from seeing this Trunks, uh, from what I've seen so far, he looks okay. Um, I don't think I've seen the final image of him yet, though. By the way, funny enough, I did actually ask, um, and ironically enough, he also has a Twitter, um, that if you would like to, you could also take a look at that, um, that I will, again, will try to leave a link in the description. Uh, his profile picture is a monster truck, that's pretty funny. But yeah, he also tweets about different figures that he sculpts, too. Um, not all of them, but again, he tweeted about... Uh, these ones that he was helping uh, sculpt. 
Okay, so this was super cool news. Um, now we're getting back into some of the SDCC stuff. Let me take a quick drink of water here. You gotta hydrate, boys. Water breaks are always important. Okay, so first look at SH Figure Arts from SDCC. Again, we will see um, some actual, like, close-up images of these in a little bit. Don't you worry. But... Um, they're showing off some prototypes at SDCC. First is the above Android 1920. Again, don't worry. We'll see some better images of them. Um, but we also had Pam shown off as well from the superhero movie. Um, very, very interesting. Um, I don't know what's going to end up being the case with this figure because as the DBZ um, figures website notes, right? This figure doesn't seem to have a whole lot of articulation. Obviously, when it comes to smaller figures like this, it is hard to make a lot of articulation because it's so small. It does seem like her arms are going to be able to rotate a 360 around. It looks like that with her arms, I'm assuming they're probably on joints for how they're, you know, kind of up in the power-up pose. As well, it looks like her legs might have a little bit of articulation. I can't tell if the knees are articulated or not. It looks like there's an indent there, but I'm not sure if that's just like the twist of the foot or not. But this definitely looks really, really close to the movie's model. Like, this is really good. Like, I thought that the Piccolo looked pretty good. Um, again, we'll have to see with Gohan, considering how we took a look at him now. But, wow, Pan looks really accurate to the movie, which is super cool to see. And I really did not expect them to make an SH Figure Arts figure of Pan. So, hopefully this figure is going to be a little bit more articulated. And I know they also noted, maybe this figure will be a part of another movie figure. Because, like they did with, uh, I think it was Birder and Goldo? Or was it Jason Gouldo? Regardless, Gouldo, right? The Ginyu Force member with the smallest stature and the least articulation because they basically just made him a small statue with some minor arm articulation. He was included in another Ginyu Force member's box. And so since Pan kind of has the same thing going on here as Gouldo, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say in my life. <laughs> um, maybe they'll include her with another figure. So again, we'll have to see. This is literally all we know. It's just the production piece here right that we just see on display at sdcc which is super cool um i love when comic-con displays stuff like this because it's just like here it is here's no information start speculating so it's always exciting to see stuff like this for sure um we will also see again uh, more images from this um in a little bit um and this was also something else that i wanted to know and again um i'll show you more proper images of this but uh, Tamashi does have a official Instagram page if you are interested uh, in following it. They tweeted out a ton of stuff from the convention, um, including some of the figures that were featured. Um, they showed some of the different uh, actual like stages and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Um, they had little like mini live streams and videos going around to the different like locations. And again, we'll see the pictures of all this stuff in a little bit. So I'm not going to go through it like a crazy amount um, because again, we'll see it in picture form and also watching a 12 minute video in a video that's already well over an hour is probably not the best idea. So if you want to check this stuff out again, I'll try and remember to leave a link in the description um, so you can go check out Tamashi's um, actual page themselves. Also very nice packaging for Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Very, very cool. Um, okay, so besides Pan there, let me actually X out of these tabs real quick so my PC doesn't actually explode. Here is the History Box Goku of Volume 4, highest quality production image, and the correct colors. So obviously this is Kid Goku in front of Muscle Tower here. Um, of course, the whole thing that they go for with the History Box, I know it's like, why is this cut in half? Obviously it's just supposed to be like a diorama of the specific chunk of land that they're on. Um, this figure does look really good. Again, this is going to be super small, especially considering the regular history box figures are already so small. This one's going to be really tiny because it's Kid Goku. Um, but this figure does look good. I mean, again, I don't know if I'm going to get this just because I already have, I have a Kid Goku on Nimbus. I'm going to be getting the GX material one and, you know, I'm also going to be getting the Kuji one. But this is definitely a decent figure if you like Dragon Ball for sure. Um, and obviously the inclusion of Muscle Tower, at least I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Muscle Tower, um, is very, very cool for sure. Okay, so we have some of the Ichiban Kuji figures, speaking of which that I've been talking about the Dragon Ball Ichiban Kuji figures, uh, unboxed here in actual, you know, consumer hands. 
Um, and again, these images are a little bit wonky because, of course, you know, we're zooming in on them here. But you can see the basics, and they look really good. Mercenary Tao looks perfectly sculpted. That literally looks like Tao when he does the Doldan Ray, right? King Piccolo also looks great. I love the crazed look. There's a lot of nice detail around his face, right, when he's first getting young again. Um, the Pilaf gang looks fantastic. Maya looks super nicely sculpted. Shu looks really good. Pilaf looks just like himself, and I love the clear Dragon Balls. That's so cool and much better than doing the stupid cheap plastic. This looks so much better. And Goku himself also looks really good. The eyes are a lot more rounded on the bottom than I feel like I had initially thought. That's what really sticks out to me about this image. But man, these all look really, really good. I'm really excited to get my hands on these. This is going to be one of those sets of figures that I feel like is not a figure of Goku. It is Goku, right? It is King Piccolo. It is Mercenary Tal. That Roger Rabbit effect that really the figure is popping right off of the screen and coming into your hands, right? Yeah, so this was also a crazy piece of news for the Dokkan Battle figures. Um, these guys sold out on Big Bad Toy Store. Um, put that in perspective that it just, um, I just had a look and it seems only one new Dragon Ball prize figure, the Glitter and Glamour's 18 is sold out since um, the six year anniversary of Vegeta, which is crazy. Now, this makes sense partially because Big Bad Toy Store is one of the places where here in the States we can get these figures as soon as possible. Um, but that is still super crazy to think that these guys are some of the first figures that sold out. I don't want to say that maybe I had a hand in this because obviously I made a video on these guys last week and slapped the link in the description to pick these guys up. So, I mean, that was like 2,000 people that watched that video. So I'd have to imagine that, you know, some of those people probably bought the figure. Maybe I had a small hand in that. That would be kind of funny if that was the case. Um, but regardless, I think people are just excited about these either way because obviously the anniversary is happening right now. So, of course, people are hyped out of their mind for those figures. But very cool. Um, this is also another little interesting piece of information about Gogeta. Not sure if I posted this or not, but the... Uh, I almost said figure rise. Oh my gosh, sorry. Figure out zero, seventh anniversary Gogeta. Exclamated package size. Excuse me. That's my dinner. 27 centimeters by 26 by 21 with a windowed box package. Again, we will get to see this guy long before he actually releases in the States because, of course, when the Japanese audience gets him, we'll get to see what the box looks like. We'll get to see what the actual figure looks like out of the box. All that good stuff. Okay, moving on. Uh, this was also... Yeah, so this is what we talked about before. Um, Joe <laughs> revealed that they sculpted uh, both of these figures, which is pretty cool. They did a very good job. This is something that I definitely want you to be wary of. This is something that I had to include in this video. Uh, the Dragon Ball Ichiban Kuji is having Boolangs out in the wild already, which is crazy because it just came out recently. Um, so it is pretty wild that we are already having some. And this box just looks really cheap. That is also clearly a Dragon Ball Super logo with the Super cropped out of it. Um, and obviously a fan logo too. Also a very like weird quality picture. I mean, this whole image is low quality because it's just from an eBay listing or something like that. But you can tell that even through the low quality image, the image of King Piccolo himself is low quality. And look, they just repeat the image a million times here. Um, Piccolo Dragon Ball. Yeah, very cool. The thing that you want to keep an eye out for these is if they have the Bandai logo, if they have... Um, all of the proper logos that should be on the box besides the Bandai logo if it needs the Bamco logo, right? The Bandai Namco arcade logo. Um, obviously, it needs to have the proper logo for the Ichiban Show here in the States or Ichiban Kuji if you're buying the Japanese version of well or of well. Excuse me, as well. Of course, it needs to have the sticker of authenticity with the Toei Animation logo. That is a must. And also, the figure shouldn't look like it's literally... Uh, popping out of the box because <laughs> the box looks like it's kind of falling apart at the seams at the top there so be careful when you're buying your figures buy them from official sources and trusted sources as well 
Okay, so again, we will get some more uh, high-quality looks at these, but this was just something I want to throw in here. This was pretty cool. The Superhero Dragon Stars and Limit Breaker Ultimate Gohan figures were revealed um, at SDCC this year, which is really cool. It includes Wave 2 Dragon Stars, which I assumed was going to be Vegeta, Gohan, and Gamma 2. Still no signs of the SGB or OP figures. Yeah, look at how big that bad boy is. Holy cow. Yeah, so that is the Limit Breaker uh, Gohan that's so big there. And then these figures next to him are the Dragon Stars one. These are more like action figures rather than traditional, like, collectibles. Um, and especially these are, like, big figures. I only own one of these because I think the faces for most of the Saiyan characters don't look that good on the Limit Breaker figures. But I do have the Golden Frieza, and I really like that figure, so... Okay, um, what do we have here? The first look at the Zenkai series in the background of Piccolo and Gohan are here. This was just something else that I wanted to show off um, because look how cool this is. At SDCC this year, they had tons of Dragon Ball giant statues, and we'll look at some more of that as well um, as we go on in this video. But wow, look at this, bro. We have the whole Z squad here, which funny enough, I believe most of these guys have figures in this exact form uh, from a very old Bampresto uh, figure line we have the it's kind of funny that they do this let me take a drink of water as you're taking a peek so this isn't just a statue of superhero piccolo this is sh figure arts superhero piccolo you can see like the details of where the sculpt cuts for the articulation sculpted into the figure it's always interesting to me that they like make a giant statue of the actual sh figure arts figure i feel like that's such a huge nerd thing to do when it could just be a giant piccolo statue but it's cool i like it it's definitely super sick to see stuff like this all the time and we have a gohan version here as well um, again, you can see all the different articulation points for Gohan. Obviously, this thing doesn't articulate. It's just a statue of an articulated figure, which is weird to say out loud, but it looks sick. Um, definitely very cool. If you're a SDCC, I'm sure people were loving this. I would have taken a million pictures. Um, such a shame that I couldn't have gone. I, you know, definitely did not have any means to get there or really the funds for right now. You know, your boy trying to save that bread. But I digress, right? Very cool stuff. Uh, SDCC. Yeah, so by the way, just wanted to throw this in here. Nothing literally from this, basically, but nothing unfortunately was shown off at the TW Expo this year in Japan. Just these same figures that we have seen time in and time out. Uh, the Superhero Adverge releases August 13th in Japan. If you're curious on the release date on this, uh, there you go. Back to SDCC, baby. Uh, kinda. This was an announcement from SDCC, and this is a bit of a toss-up for me. So, here's what we got going on, right? If y'all remember, I guess we should look at this image first. If y'all remember, we took a look at this a while ago on a figure news video. Um, this is the Cell Shell, <laughs> Heroes in a Half Shell, the um, prototype for this, and when they initially showed this off as well, they showed off the prototype for the Imperfect Cell as well, there's the original Dr. Jero that we now have the new showing of, right, which again, we'll see those images in a little bit, um, but, if you remember, they showed this with SH Figure Arts figures, which is interesting, it didn't seem to have any articulation, but it's weird that they showed it off with that, and then... This is what they decide to do. So, for Dragon Ball The Breakers, right, um, which is the upcoming Dragon Ball game for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch, um, they have a couple of different, like, limited edition versions of this, but the limited edition version from the Bamco store has the Cell Shell figure in it. Why they decided to include this in here is beyond me. I'm kind of shocked that this is how they decided to release this as a limited edition thing. Maybe they just thought that people wouldn't want this if they sold it as a separate product or something like that. It kind of feels like a way to just inflate the price of this limited edition package. Um, you know, like, I can understand, like, these extra accessories and, like, avatar items and, like, costumes and skins and stuff like that and the steelbook for the game, right? Some stickers of the art from the game. But, like, the cell 
I don't know. I know they've done this with some other Dragon Ball figures. Like, I think there's a special edition of Fighters that came with, like, a version of a Goku figure that already existed. But taking a figure that they showed off that was supposed to be an SH Figure Arts figure and changing it into this is very strange to me. So, I will probably be getting this version. Um, I mean, I'm a sucker for limited edition when it comes to stuff like this, especially for Dragon Ball games. Um, so, I want the Cell Shell. So we'll see when it ends up releasing, how it looks, and if it has any articulation. The only thing I could even see would maybe be there, but it wouldn't even really make sense. I don't know. Just such a strange debacle. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about this. I mean, it didn't feel like it fit with SH Figure Arts anyway, because it's so much bigger than the scale of this line. But I don't know. Just very strange. Oh yeah, so this was pretty cool. This was another picture from SDCC. Um, just a quick picture of the exclusive figures that they had this year. Dragon Ball had so much and there was only one One Piece figure. Or One Piece. Wow, that was a big L on my part. Holy cow. Uh, Naruto, I'm sorry. With uh, Madara here. But yeah, very cool little display of all the exclusives um, at SDCC. As well, we had the display for Purunga and the Krillin and Gohan. You can see what I was talking about, by the way. His eyes are huge. <laughs> very cool display, though. Um, this was also interesting. We had the SHF Turles shown off. I believe that this was also at SDCC um, because it is English in the background. So that's what I'm kind of assuming. Um, I think this figure looks really good. The one thing that I am kind of noticing again is that I was commenting how his hair looks a little bit weird. And I definitely feel like it looks a little bit strange here. I'm assuming this is the final figure because they have him listed for pre-order on Premium Bandai already. So why would it not be? But at the same time, like this kind of still feels like a little bit of a prototype to me. I don't know. Very interesting. I also feel like this little flap on the Saiyan armor isn't big enough. Um, but that could just be me. This is a very interesting way to do the cloak. It's like literally formed to his sculpt. I mean, makes sense, but it's not like malleable. It looks like it looks like it's hard plastic. Very interesting. It'll be interesting to see when those release as well. Uh, we have the Dragon Ball Evolve figures here. This is a very cheap Dragon Ball figure line. These are all like 10 bucks. These are more like action figures than anything. Um, but the art on these is always super cool. And bro, look at Vegito and Beerus. They look fire, bro. Super cool. I definitely hope we can get a high quality piece um, of this art. Or at least like a scan of the box. Because that would be super cool um, to get that for sure. Okay, so some good and bad news for the movie Kuji. Um, asking around and seeing Japanese folks' predictions, Gohan and Goten should fly under the radar due to the villain type, thankfully, but Turles is expected to be around 13 to 15k yen and Janemba to 15 to 20 due to the non Saiyan tax. Very funny that that's what it's called, um, but obviously the characters that aren't Saiyans get a lot less love. So we'll have to see what ends up truly becoming of the prices of these, but from predictions from Japanese fans who know what they're talking about, that's going to be pretty expensive. That's 130 to 150 for Thurlis and 150 to 200 for Janemba. It's crazy. Versus Omnibus Ultra, Japanese release confirmed October 15th and distributed via 7-Eleven in Japan. I actually had this info last week, but figured the official confirmation was right around the corner. Yeah, might as well. I'm still so disappointed that this is the last one figure, because this is the figure that I quite literally want the most from this whole set. So I really hope I can get this guy imported for sure. So this was also kind of interesting. Based on the production code, it seems the Kuji 4th mission for SDBH will only release in Japan, China, and Taiwan, which is interesting because obviously um, sometimes other Asian countries get the Kujis, but it seems like that this time um, not all of them will, which I guess makes sense because again here is a little bit more of a uni uh, niche thing. Here are the ratios for the figures at the different stores. So Rosé is going to be one. The um, Warrior in Black, I almost called him the Ranger in Black for some reason, is going to be two. Um, the Goku Super Saiyan 4 is going to be one. The Vegeta is going to be two. That's interesting. Um, the Gogeta is going to be one. And then the smaller prize are going to be 12, 29, and 32. Very interesting. 
Moving on, here we have the various displays from SDCC, all of the figure displays in this one thread. This is definitely something that I wanted to take a look at. This is super cool, first of all, just like, that's sick. <laughs> it's just a giant display of Goku and Vegeta as well. We have the Ginyu Force here. Um, it's kind of funny because I remember this statue is at another event. Um, and they were releasing the SH Figure Arts versions of these, but it's funny that this isn't like the SH Figure Arts version of these guys, it's just an actual statue. And this is also kind of funny too, because this is like a huge statue of the Grade 8 Vegeta here, and it doesn't look like it's sculpted in the same way as the SH Figure Arts one, in terms of like the articulation bits on the SH Figure Arts one being present, but this is definitely sculpted after that mold, because it looks almost exactly the same. Um, but it does look sick. It looks really, really cool. I definitely like the way that this looks. Obviously, this is huge. You can see the people compared to Vegeta here. That's awesome. We obviously saw this one as well already, too. Okay, so let's take a look at all the different little booths that we had here um, for the various different Dragon Ball figures. So for Figure Eye Standard, we have the Son Goku New Spec version. Uh, they re-released the old figure eye standard goku and i gotta say this figure looks pretty good i really really like the face on the happy face for goku here it looks very very nice um again figure eye standard is model kits so you have to build these i have enjoyed i've only ever built two of these but i've enjoyed the time that i've had with the line uh the line excuse me yeah this was the original one uh the original goku you can see that this one is definitely vastly this guy's superior right the the new spec version of goku is definitely um a lot better than this one even though this is definitely not a bad figure by any means and also i think this was one of the first model kits that they ever made so that makes sense super saiyan one as well um oh these are interesting figure i standard light so I, okay, so this isn't the original one, I'm sorry. This is something different, that's right. So these are basically like a more simplified version of figurized model kits, where it's not as complicated to put it together, which is interesting. Um, okay, well, yeah, this Goku still looks way better. <laughs> I mean, this guy is like 12 bucks more, but again, it's because he's the higher quality version of it, right? Um, here we have a bunch of different figures. Um, I actually have this MUI. Funny enough, I have Cell and Frieza too. It kind of looks like Frieza fell over in the display. That's kind of funny. Um, I also have the Gogeta too, but I just haven't built them yet. Um, but, as you can see, they have all the MSRP prices for these guys. And something interesting to note with all these figures is that these are actually painted versions of these guys because the actual final version of these figures don't have these like weathering effects it's really easy to tell it on goku here with these little indented uh like lines you can see that almost like emphasize his muscles a little bit more frieza has this little bit of weathering effect all over him the final figure does not look like that because obviously it's a model kit it's meant to be painted so it's interesting to me that they display them with the actual paint on them i wonder if there's a disclaimer anywhere because i feel like people would expect it to look like this out of the box Anyway, we have some of the Dragon Stars figures on display here. Um, again, not my favorite figure line, but definitely a very cool action figure line. I, I would say if I was a kid and my parents handed me one of these bad boys, I'd go nuts. <laughs> for sure. These are super cool action figures, for sure, for any kid who likes Dragon Ball. Absolutely. Um, I actually do have the regular Janemba. I don't think that that's a, um, a bad one. It actually looks pretty cool. But the screaming face, I will say, is definitely a little bit intense for your boy. Very cool, though, uh, that they are still showing them off as well uh, as DCC. We have another display. Holy moly, look at all those gamers. Yeah, the Janemba one is the only one that I have um, out of the whole line. But these are <laughs> almost everything that they've ever released. Why would they just shove them all in a cabinet? Like, I guess you could see them all, but, like, this feels like such a weird display because it's just, like, all of them, and they're not, like battling each other like at least with all the other displays they were kind of like posed i mean it is harder to pose these because obviously you know they're not as posable as sh figures but still like even these are better right they're at least more spread out you can see all the different stuff but yeah these are the power of pack ones these are the ones that come with the different aura effects and stuff um i would say honestly if you are trying to get some SH Figure Arts power-up parts, and those are a little bit too expensive for your liking. You could just cop one of these bad boys, because honestly, it might just be cheaper to buy one of these and then take the effect parts out of it and use it for SH Figure Arts. That's honestly not a bad idea, um, for sure. 
These are the Dragon Ball Flash figures. These are these new Dragon Ball figures that were kind of announced recently. Um, they are only seven bucks a pop, which is really cheap and even cheaper than the other Dragon Ball figure line. Oh my gosh, it's literally escaping my mind. Dragon Ball Evolve, there we go, that we took a little bit of a look at earlier. Um, these definitely feel a little bit more like action figures again too. Um, it also seems like though, interestingly enough, they don't have any articulation which is really interesting. They just have this small stand, which I think may have their face on it. I don't know why the stand is like in front of the character if it didn't have some kind of thing on it. Um, but yeah, these are just like minifigures basically as far as I know, which is really weird um, that they would make something like this. I guess it's for just the consumer who would see this at Target and be like, yeah, I want a little Goku on my desk and then slap one on there. I'm gonna actually get the ultimate Gohan because the hair sculpt looks really good. I'd have to see what it looks like up close. You can also see the Ichiban show in the Dragon Ball um, card ass booth in the back as well. Here is a up close look at the Limit Breaker booth. Um, obviously, these are the figures I was talking about before where um, they are a little bit bigger and they're more like akin to kind of like vinyl figures, even though they're not exactly like that. I always thought that the Saiyans' faces looked pretty weird on these. Gogeta's doesn't look too bad, but they were just always a little bit off putting to me. Funny enough, I always thought that the non Saiyan characters looked the best. Like, I think Cell looks pretty good there um, in the background. And again, like I said, I have the Golden Frieza from that line. Here we have the. Um, these are the, like, just various different Dragon Ball action figures and stuff like that. We have the Final Blast series, which are these very cute chibi mini figures that have these really cool blast effects. Um, I actually would really like to get the Gohan and Cell one at some point, because that'd be cool to set them up next to each other. And the Attack Collection series, these are definitely more toys than anything, because you, like, click a button on the character's back and his, like, arm zooms around, basically, with the key blast. Pretty cool kid's toy, for sure. Um, we also had the... Um, Chibi line, the Chibi Masters shown off. I really want to get this whole line uh, at some point. I've not picked these guys up yet just because I haven't gotten around to it. Um, they're not that hard to find either, um, so it's not like there's really any like craze to you know pick them up. But they are very cute. I like this, and this is definitely something that Dragon Ball doesn't do um, too crazy often in this like art style anyway. Very cool. We also had the Dragon Ball Versus and UDM lines shown off here. Funny enough, this is the box of UDM figures, or UDM figures, excuse me, the Versus figures that uh, we talked about earlier and the ones that I saw at Target out of the box and on display here, which is pretty cool, as well as the UDM Burst figures. Why they chose these two sets, I guess maybe it's just because they were the newest ones, um, but it is a little bit interesting because, like, these are very hard to find in terms of the UDMs, right? Like, you basically have to find a place with a Gashapon machine. Um, so it's interesting that it just says now on sale and they don't, like, have a place where you could buy it. Maybe they have some kind of display outside of this. It's also interesting that they don't list the price either. Um, that is quite peculiar. They kind of, like, cover it up there a little bit. Yeah, so here's the Dragon Ball Evolve line. I've seen this Goku, Trunks, and Gogeta at like a million different targets before. Again, these are just like little Dragon Ball minifigure action figures. I would like to get one of these at some point just to take a look at it and, you know, see like how they are. Um, definitely not like too crazy, but they are pretty cool. They definitely seem to have some decent articulation from at least the way that Goku is articulated there. Pretty cool stuff though. Um, we also have the Clear Rise line on display, so now we're getting into the Bampresto and Kuji stuff. Um, again, we have the um, Goku Black sort of as the featured figure here, and again, he looks really good. I think him and Vegeta might be the best looking Clear Rise figures so far. Funny that they actually do list here. I was just saying, why don't you list where you could buy it? Walmart, Crunchyroll, Target, Hobby Lobby? Really? I'm surprised they listed that. Uh, Barnes and Noble box lunch hot topic in GameStop. Wow. Let's read that little thing there. What does that say? Um, oh, thank you, Car, for going by. I appreciate it. I know you're excited about the Clear Eyes line. A series which replicates fighters' aura, expressing the series' concept with clear materials and paint brushing. I don't know if I agree with that statement, but all right, Bandai. <laughs> Go off. It's also interesting to see that Bandai has doubled down on the whole... These figures are not $20 anymore, they're 30 bucks a pop, because as you remember, uh, or if you've been in the figure collecting scene, you would remember for a little bit, um, that the standard price for prize figures should be around $20 and has been, and on here it is $30. So this is just more confirmation that they are raising the prices on everything and just kind of rolling with it, basically, and things aren't going to go back to how they were before. 
here we have the solid edgeworks line um very interesting so we have the go tanks and obviously the gohan that we've taken a look at i don't think that we've seen a decent look at the gogeta yet that's honestly a pretty good looking gogeta figure i might honestly caught the super saiyan one because that is the only thing that i'm lacking on in terms of my dragon ball super broly gogeta figures is super saiyan gogeta and he looks pretty decent so i'll have to see a more clear um you know look at him but it's kind of funny that they took the best solid edgeworks figures because some of the ones from earlier in the line were terrible so it's kind of funny that they decided not to display those ones um here but with the gx material line, we just got it all on the table baby we just got everything right there's a couple of boys missing from this obviously kid goku and rose are not present but oh my gosh look at all of these gamers chilling here that's crazy funny enough actually uh, I believe Goku came out when the figures weren't $30, so it's interesting that they still call him a $30 figure. Like, I think I got my Yamcha for, like, $25, um, but again, I guess I'm not buying it from the place that Bandai would maybe prefer me to buy it from with that high of a price tag, but cool that they're showing off the line. Easily my favorite Dragon Ball figure line right now, for sure. Um, I definitely got to cop these three gamers um, soon, too. We have the history box line on display. I can't believe they had the nerve to display volume two. Oh my gosh, bro. That's a yikers right there for sure. Yuck. Um, but nonetheless, here they are. And you can tell as well from just the scale of how big these displays are that these are really small. Um, that's even just another way to see it. So this was something really cool. Take a look at this for a moment while I take another drink of water. This was something super cool they had on display for the various different SH figure arts figures here. Um, they had a bunch of different sagas represented. Um, we have the Saiyan saga here with a couple of figures from this that are exclusive. Interesting that they don't have the over-the-counter release Kaioken Goku. Interesting. I don't know why he's not represented there. Frieza saga. It's funny too because you can see like some of the figures that are a little bit older, right? Like you can tell that these guys are all newer here and Goku's relatively newer. Obviously Krillin and Gohan are very new. But Gohan or Gohan, wow, Goku rather. Holy cow, my man's old. He kind of needs a re-release low key. Um, but nonetheless, I think they also used the Funnel Form Frieza that had the Halo included with it. Um, but interestingly enough, another thing that you'll notice here um, is that they, I forget what saga isn't included here, but there's a saga that's not included. I, somebody talked about it. Now it's escaping my mind. I'm sorry. Um, but okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. So we have cell saga here. Um, I don't know if these are the exclusive color versions from this year's, um, or well, I guess it'd be 16. And then I think last year was the exclusives or maybe it was two years ago for the androids. Um, but we have Imperfect Cell on display, the Krillin, the World's Strongest Man, but these are some old figures with the armor Vegeta and the armor trunks. Those bad boys need re-releases desperately. Um, we also have, funny enough, this figure is kind of newer. I think this is the full power Super Saiyan Goku. It's kind of hard to tell because his face is not visible. And then the Cell, which looks also to be the re-release of Cell. And then we have the Boo Saga represented here, which this, I think, must be the SDCC exclusive Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Um, and we also have the very old Machin Vegeta. I kind of can't believe that they put that out because that's like one of the most requested re-releases of like all time for SH figure arts. Um, we also have the Super Saiyan 1 Gotenks and Super Boo on display here um, as well. We also have Mr. Boo and Hercule here too, which is pretty cool. I like these little blocks as well that say the different sagas. That's a very nice touch. Um, and funny enough, they have GT, <laughs> which is pretty funny that they decided to include that. It's kind of interesting that they didn't do Dragon Ball Super, but I suppose considering, you know, everyone and their mother is hyped out of their mind for the Super Saiyan 4 uh, SH figure arts figures right now, it makes sense that they would be giving GT a little bit of love. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Maybe this is just supposed to be the Earth. It's kind of weird that it's included here, but also cool that Shinron is, uh, you know, like propped up in the middle of all this as well. You can see all the different, like, things that they need to hold them up, too, because obviously it's so complicated to hold them up. But, yeah, very cool display of SH figure arts at SDCC. You'd love to see it. Also, have to include this because that's pretty funny <laughs> at the Breakers booth. That's pretty neat. Okay, 
So, moving on from SDCC, and I think we'll go back one more time again. Um, confirmation history box is being made at Vietnam. Honestly, not bad finals at all. Yeah, definitely um, pretty decent. Solid Edgeworks Gogeta looks awful. Uh, I couldn't really tell from those images. He looked okay. Um, we'll have to see. Okay, so yeah, so we have some more pictures. Let me actually take a look at this on the proper website rather than going through it here. Um, of a bunch of this stuff in a little bit more high quality. I'll speed through the stuff that we've already seen. Um, because obviously we've seen most of the Paranga stuff already. Um, but there are some nice close-ups here that we have yet to see. Ooh, I don't know if I like those production lines, those factory lines. Looks a little bit yucky. The paint also feels kind of cheap on the yellow there. Interesting. Dende looks pretty good, though, uh, standing next to the boys. Obviously, the Vegeta that we saw earlier, there's a better angle of that where you can really tell how big that bad boy is. That's cool. That almost looks fake. It looks so cool. <laughs> Here's the Goku and Vegeta statue again. They had a bunch of Dragon Ball superhero stuff on display. Here's a close-up of that Vegeta. So the Ginyu Force 2, the Tamashi Nations booth. Ah, okay, so here uh, is what we're looking for. Obviously, they showed off the prototypes for the Jiro and 20. Obviously, it makes sense because right now they are kind of rounding off all the different sagas. We're basically done. Oh, that's right. Um, oh, no, wait. They had the Frieza saga there, didn't they? In the whole thread? Hold on. I need to check back. It was this one, right? For all of these, they had the... No, they skipped the Saiyan. Oh, no, no, they do have it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. For some reason, um, I was tripping. But, yeah, interesting that they didn't um, show up the Ginyu Force, which I thought that was a little bit interesting because they just finished-ish. But I guess they can't show off every single figure. Anyway, as we're rounding off the Cell Saga figures, um, I know we're probably going to get more Boo Saga stuff coming up soon, too, um, after they finish off Cell Saga. These guys look really good. It's going to be interesting to see the different features that they have. If they have, like, the little dots on their hands that the androids have. If you can remove Jero's cranium thing to see his brain, right? It's going to be interesting to see all the little details on these. But for the moment, they look really good. I think Android 20 might even look better than Jero, funny enough. Um, they look good. Here is Pan as well. Some different images of her. You can see this big line on her cranium. I assume that's because that's the part that you would remove to change the faceplate for her. Um, yeah, not a lot of articulation, though it does kind of look like she has a butterfly joint. That definitely looks like a butterfly joint to me. And you can actually see in this image, there is a little bit of knee articulation there. Interesting. This figure does look like it's going to be a little bit more articulated than some smaller figures that we've seen in the past. Very interesting. Here's a close-up of the funny clown man, and here's a close-up of Jiro. Definitely not too bad-looking figures, if I do say so myself. Um, I'm not too crazy on these, just because, like, you know, I'm not a big fan of the androids, I guess. Even though I like the Cell Saga, like, but I wouldn't buy, like, an $80 figure of them. I'm not that crazy of an SH figure arts collector anyway, even though I have quite a few of them now. But um, for people who want to, like, make the whole saga, it's awesome that they make characters like these. So here we have all these superhero figures on display, and we actually have, I think, the first IRL showing, at least to my knowledge, of the Super Saiyan and the Cape version of Gohan, which they put in the super small text that you can only get these accessories with Gamma 1 and 2. So, again, I suppose the nice thing about this um, is that if you don't like the head on the Ultimate Gohan one, you could use these, even though you shouldn't have to even say that, but here we are, right? Also interesting that they note that this is indicated release date is of the Japanese release schedule. That's cool that they note that so people aren't confused. Yeah, so here's Gohan. Um, I think his forehead is definitely a little bit big. His face is like not terrible. It definitely looks better than that crummy image from before, but I mean, it was so zoomed in. What do you expect? It doesn't look as good as the original image. Again, I'll have to see more like angles of it in actual motion and video. Um, here we have the Super Saiyan Gohan um, with the screaming head. I think that this is just a really bad angle because it looks super goofy here, but obviously it also has that faceplate too. Um, ooh, interesting. Okay, so the glasses are kind of like pushed back a little bit they're not like flat on his face which is interesting and i don't mean flat on his face like they're smushed against his face i mean like they don't look like actual glasses how there's not like a bend backwards towards your head which is kind of how this looks interesting his eyes are also a little bit hard to tell how they look on there i do like the hair sculpt a lot though the hair sculpt looks fantastic 
okay so yeah so here we have oh boy i can't believe that they uh <laughs> they did this but the premium bandai booth here um these are obviously the exclusive gamers with the gamma one and two showing them off in their iconic poses from the movie and your boy turles here as well um very interesting that they have a separate booth for them this is such a weird lineup of characters too but i mean yeah it makes sense because obviously this is the only place that you can buy these guys so is with premium bandai yeah definitely very interesting here's a close-up look at the turles as well the fruit is a lot smaller than i thought it was going to be but i guess it makes sense to fit an sh figure arts figure's hand yeah his hair sculpt feels really weird to me like it feels a little droopy i don't know also, can, is that a little piece of plastic there? Or is that just on the glass? I can't really tell. They sort of, like, cut off his hair. No, eh, that might be there. I don't know. The sculpt looks a little bit weird to me. Also, ooh, I don't like that gapping on the hand. Very interesting. Also, they couldn't have hid this a little bit better? I feel like they must have some better engineering for that. Why do his knees also look a different color? This has to be a prototype. There's no way that this is the final one. That has to be a prototype. Unfortunately, there's no, like, um... As far as I can see here, there's not really, like, a sign that says prototype. I would hope so, but I don't know. I guess we'll see. Very interesting, though. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, so here's some other angles of the displays that they had here. Again, very cool stuff. It's just awesome to see them do neat stuff like this with Dragon Ball figures because, again, people can set this up themselves, but it's always interesting to see what Bandai themselves cooks up. Um, for official stuff. Yeah, this is definitely the re-release of Frieza because purple is a lot more vibrant. Yeah, that Goku is definitely the older one though. Let's see. Yeah, so this was the other thing I wanted to talk about too uh, that I missed with the Cell image. So they're showing this off with the SH Figure Arts figures again, even though they just announced that this is coming with the Breakers Limited Edition. So strange. I don't know, why would you show this off at the SH Figure Arts figures if it's not going to be included in that line? It's so weird. I don't know, very strange to me. I don't know why they would do that. Yeah, that's definitely the, I think that's a special color cell. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, that's definitely the old Trunks and Vegeta though. It's funny that they chose those, um, but I guess it makes sense. Yeah, here's 16 and uh, the Boo Saga. Yeah, this is definitely the Majin Buu. Um, ooh, that looks sick, bro. Yeah, this is definitely the exclusive Goku because he has a little bit of a rip um, in his gi there. They definitely need to re-release Majin Vegeta. I like this setup, too, where we have them on the lookout here. That's pretty sick. Definitely very cool. And a very nice first look at your boy Vegeta as well. Again, unfortunately, uh, not the best angle on this image here, but he definitely looks pretty good. I'm excited to see how he ends up looking. And there's your boy Shinron. This is the SDCC color version, so I'm assuming all the other ones are, because uh, you can see the like glow on him, which is the SDCC version is like a pearlescent version of Shinron. Very cool looking for sure. It looks very nice, like in the sunlight. Okay, so moving on to the superhero booth. Um, as you can see here, they have just a little bit of a different display um, for the figures from the movie. Oh, this is cool. This is supposed to be like this art, right? That is one of the promotional pieces from the movie, but with the SH Figure Arts figures that have been released, um, taking the places of where the characters would be in the actual art. That's super neat. I like that a lot. And there's even like a physical car back there, which is cool. I don't know if this means that there's going to be a SH Figure Arts Carmine and Magenta and Dr. Hedo, but I mean, Pan is there, so I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit of a hint there, but that is pretty cool, um, obviously using um, some different poses and some different head sculpts um, from that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that that means that they're going to get figures, but that is everything um, from SDCC, I believe. Um, that we have for today, but we have a couple more things. Prize fair confirmed will show off, or, or sorry, will show off January to March 2023 prize figures one month ago. Yeah, so uh, if you're unfamiliar, around, I believe around this time of year, there's always a prize fair. Um, pretty sure it's in the summer. I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that one. However, there is a prize fair um, coming up in a month, and they are going to be showing off all the January and March 2023 figures. So let's hope the Orange Piccolo and Gohan Beast are in there. I am really, really hoping for that. Um, it'll be cool to see if they are. Um, yeah, this is a little bit confusing for sure. <laughs> Android Fear? <laughs> that 
That's goofy that they called it that. Uh, Android Ichiban Show was shown off, but they didn't disclose that they are PX exclusives. That's just going to confuse so many people at STCC. Yeah, for real. I did ask as well, a Previews World exclusive limited edition run for comic book stores, etc. Um, I will have to look into this a little bit more, but that is what PX means. Um, very interesting if you want to cop those bad boys. It is interesting as well. They also list them at the $55 price tag, which is, of course, the more quote unquote modern day Kuji price. Oh, yeah, so this is very quick. I won't linger on this too often, but oh boy, here's these superhero Gashapon figures that we've been taking a look at for a couple times now, and they don't look that great for a quote unquote premium Gashapon. This is definitely not the best looking for sure. Um, I think we also have another tweet of that later. Um, here we have the box for the Golden Shinron. This box looks crazy good. Look at that. Very, very cool. I like it. Even though it's a little bit, like, tacky, I guess. I love whenever they do stuff like this on the figure boxes. It just makes it feel so cool. Um, yeah, so then here's the top. Because this is the last one figure, by the way, it doesn't actually have the sticker. The last one figures usually don't. I don't know why they do that, but that's just how they've always done it. Um, or maybe not always, but that's how they've done it for a while. Anyway, reminder uh, that the Shinron can only be run in Japan, um, Malaysia, Singapore, and Taiwan. <laughs> so he said he can hopefully get one through his various contacts, so that would be cool to see if Baggy doesn't get him one. Um, yeah, this was also kind of interesting. So we saw this before, um, but the uh, Solid Edwards display at SCCC has the overseas packaging copyright info in English for Gohan. So therefore, there's a chance he won't be delayed in the West, like we've been talking about for a couple videos now. Seeing history box three final colors and natural light not feeling the hair color tbh probably needs a repaint and the base absolutely needs a repaint too yeah um very interesting yeah look at how like mustardy yellow he looks very interesting um that they decided to go with that color hopefully um a paint job will fix that up a little bit if you are interested in that sort of thing yeah so here's some current aftermarket prices in japan for shinron Wow, um, yeah, so that's not like a hundred dollars. That's like a thousand <laughs> almost um, That I, I believe or m actually wait no way more than that. Hold on No, that has to be okay. So this one is oh two. Oh my lord Holy cow. Yeah, that's high. Um, <laughs> So a thousand yen is about ten bucks, right? So, kind of do the conversion in your mind. Uh, yikes! And that's crazy to see that these are sold listings, bro. These aren't even like, you know, people are asking. These are sold. That's insane. All right, so this was also pretty cool. Um, a better look at the display for the Gogeta. Unfortunately, the images are a little bit blurry here, um, but. You can see um, that the way that the effect on Gogeta is actually looks like it's floating in the air. I'm really curious to see on the final figure how they did that. This is obviously at SDCC, um, the Figure Arts Zero booth. But yeah, pretty cool um, that they decided to, um, you know, display it like this. Very awesome. I guess it makes sense considering now he's releasing in November. All right, so this was at the Bampresto Lab. Um, they were showing off the BOS Gohan here with a very cool poster. Um, let's let these images load. Let me go to this next page so we can also have this load since we're, we're almost at the end here, bro. We're almost there. I know this has been a very long figure news video. I appreciate you if you have stuck through the entire time. Obviously, this is a super long video, so thank you. Let me let these images load. Okay, there we go. So here's Gohan. Yeah, this looks really good. This looks a lot better than those initial production images, if I do say so myself. Even from this angle, which I know is probably not the angle you would be looking at him normally, he looks really good. I like it on this little rock setup, too. It looks pretty cool. As well, we also have the Clear Rise Vegeta that was shown off at the Bampresto Lab. Again, not, not, not too crazy, honestly. Um, I definitely think that Gohan looks better. I mean, that's like not a great comparison to make, but um, yeah, very interesting. And as well, this was something else that I wanted to show off. Um, so we were talking about these Gashapon figures, right? 600 yen for the Goku, um, the Gamma 1 and 2. 
And look at these. These are Gashapon toys of these little bugs over here, as well as these Ultraman figures. And those were 500 yen, respectfully. Look how big they are, and look how high quality they are compared to those stinky Gashapon figures from Dragon Ball. Very, very unfortunate to see um, that the quality has just gone down a ton. And finally, um, the Ichiban Kuji is starting to release in, uh, I almost said Japan, in China, excuse me, um, as a Kuji, not a proper Ichiban show for the Chinese audience for the Dragon Ball Kuji. Can I not open this in a new tab? Am I just maxed out on tabs? I think I'm just maxed out on tabs here. <laughs> I was going to see if Baggy has tweeted anything else out new. I'll just click on it just to see while we're here. Um, yeah, no, okay, it's just what I saw from before. So that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was probably the longest figure news to date. Um, certainly the longest one on this channel. Maybe the longest one we've ever done. But obviously we had all of the figure news from the week, right? With all of the normal stuff that we saw. And then obviously we had all of the SDCC stuff to take a look at as well. Um, so of course there was going to be a ton of news this week um, with all this stuff going on. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about everything that we took a look at in the comment section below. Let me know what you're looking forward to the most out of all these figures. Myself? Um... I don't know, bro. There's so much cool stuff coming out for Dragon Ball. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I am looking forward to getting SH Figure Arts Gohan because that's probably going to be the newest uh, thing that I get or the most recent. But probably the DB Kuji just because obviously that's also dropping towards the end of August. So can't wait to get my hands on that. But thank you guys so much for watching this literal movie length of a figure news. I will catch you guys in the next one. Dokkan Assets out. Peace.